Welcome, dear members, to our luxurious session today, the Ferragamo story on the history, journey, present scenario, and way forward of an iconic brand we all love. Before we start this conversation, I would like to give you a brief insight on Salvatore Ferragamo himself and an insight into his granddaughter, Angelica Visconti, who we are delighted to have amongst us today. Salvatore, was an artisan and an innovator who in 1927 in the city of Florence organized an assembly line production of handcrafted shoes, giving birth to the brand Ferragamo as we still know it today. The 13th century, Palazzo Spini Ferroni was purchased in 1937 as a workplace and showroom. Till today, it is one of the most historic buildings of the city of Florence, lovingly known as Museo Salvatore Ferragamo. Post his death, the family carried on his vision to build the company from a custom-made shoe business for the privileged few to a global, privately owned corporation. Today, there are approximately 500 Ferragamo stores all across the globe, representing high quality products with the same sophisticated standards originally established, sustaining the legacy of a truly unique man. Angelica joined the family business in 2002, is one of three family members selected to be a part of the company. She is currently global travel retail and wholesale director for the brand and is a member of the board of directors. Angelica, a very warm welcome. We are honored to have you with us today. 
Good morning, Redima. And good afternoon from us and good morning to you. Thank you very much uh, for hosting this uh, very interesting meeting with all of you. I'm very happy to share our history and our experience and um, to be able to discuss it uh, with you and your um, uh, members of your- delighted to have a woman entrepreneur amongst us of this global scale with this legacy. So uh, Angelica, should we jump into the conversation or do you want to start with the presentation? I would start with the presentation. I'll share my screen with you. Yes, please. Uh, please let me, um, let me know if you can uh, view everything properly. We will. You should see by now uh, our um, picture. You cannot see anything. You don't see anything yet. Just a second. I'll try again. I have your presentation too, so I can always run it. Can you see it now? No, we can't. Why don't I run it for you, Angelica? And you can tell me when to go on to the next one. Perfect. So just tell me when next. Yes. So this is our founder, Salvatore Ferragamo. You um, may know uh, his uh, history. I briefly recall uh, he was um, a young boy born in a small town close to Naples in uh, Italy. And uh, he always had a passion for shoes. So even uh, if he was a young boy, he uh, wanted to start uh, uh, to work uh, with a local shoemaker which was something not really well seen, of course, in his family because they were encouraging him to study and to um, go to university, which was something that he did later on when he went to study anatomy because uh, uh, he became more and more passionate about the shoes, their contraction, and especially he wanted to make women feel comfortable when walking. So he really had this mission in mind and uh, um, he started very young to work. He joined uh, his brothers, which uh, left for the United States. He was very young and uh, he went there to look uh, um, for a job. He was not interested at all in the, let's say, rising uh, industry where shoemaking was something made in an industrial way. He really believed in the quality of making the perfect shoes still with very um, high percentage of high craftsmanship. And so he started to work with, you can go to the next slide. He started to work with the movie industry because there it was a field where he could really work uh, uh, with a special product made uh, for um, a certain actress or a certain uh, movie scene. So something very special, which was really what he liked. The actresses, they started to wear his shoes on the set. They become crazy about the fit and the creativity of these styles. And they started really to become uh, uh, his best uh, brand ambassadors. Um, he moved uh, to Hollywood uh, in a permanent way at this point, and he opened there his first store called the Hollywood Bookshop in the 1920s. He then uh, came back to Italy in 1927 because he wanted to keep working with the best artisans worldwide, and there is where he thought uh, he could find this knowledge. He bought our current headquarter in 1938, which is the building you can see in the picture. 
And uh, this building is still today our headquarter in Florence. Here is also the head of our museum, which is a, a museum that has all of his collection of shoes hosted inside. In 1947, he won the Neiman Marcus Award for Shoes, which is sort of an Oscar for the fashion industry. And it was something very uh, prestigious. He went by boat to the United States from Italy. And on the boat, he was together with Christian Dior. They both went to receive this very important uh, prize. Um, he had invented a very interesting shoe that was made with uh, the material with which the fishermen went to fish. So it was an invisible thread and it was called the invisible sandal, something really um, very creative in the shape and also in the materials he used. During the war in Italy, you were not allowed to use any more all uh, leather and uh, industrial materials. So he had to invent uh, a series of shoes, uh, which is very actual today, especially considering all the importance that we give to uh, the use of natural materials. And he started to work with cork, uh, with secondhand materials. Uh, and he was, let's say, the first uh, designer to uh, design uh, sustainable shoes, we can say, with raffia, with the woven crochet, and all uh, very uh, natural materials. It was a very successful collection. And as we were saying, he won the fashion Oscar with one of these styles. During this same period, he invented the wedge, which was a, a sort of a mm, first uh, a style of platform, sort of a platform, uh, very light, made of cork from the woods uh, surrounding Florence. We had a lot of this material and this very innovative style was created then. Uh, since, uh, let's say, um, his departure, which unfortunately happened when he was quite young, uh, his legacy was then passed over to uh, his wife, Vanda. She had the mission to bring forward his dream. His dream was to dress a lady from toe to head. So uh, he was dreaming about expanding his uh, shoe business into something that could completely dress a lady. And uh, since the 1960, uh, Vanda uh, started to work at this. She required immediately the help of their six children. You can see in the picture, Fiamma, Fulvia, Giovanna, Ferruccio, Leonardo and Massimo they started to uh, be involved in the business very young as well. Each of them uh, following a special area of the company's activity or founding a new area of the business. For example, Fiamma, she uh, is the eldest and she started to work uh, uh, in the shoe division, taking forward le the legacy of Salvatore. She is the um, one who invented the famous Varabo, which is still today uh, one of the best selling styles. Um, Fulvia, uh, my mother, she started to uh, work in the silk business. She founded a new division where uh, she was working with all the artisans uh, uh, to create scarves, uh, ties, and develop all the textile part of the business. Leonardo started to work in the commercial area and developing new markets. Ferragamo was one of the first brands uh, to start the activity uh, in the Asian market. So apart from the US, which was of course one of the founding uh, markets where all the business started, then Asia followed uh, straight, um, straight away. We also had already quite a big network of stores in Europe because Ferragamo was always very uh, interested in working with the local clients in every market and really in offering the, the best uh, service in terms of closeness to the client. 
this is a strategy that uh, we still uh, bring ahead. And also, uh, as we are in India, we develop also partnership with important uh, local uh, operators uh, to develop uh, a business and a store network locally. Uh, if we move to the next uh, slide, um, this is a, a point we wanted to show you. As I was saying at the beginning, one of the important uh, pillars uh, of our uh, company, it's really the shoemaking, the art of shoemaking. Um, Salvatore invented uh, um, a very important uh, tool, uh, let's say, to have the perfect fit of the shoe. Because as you can see in this picture, when you take a look at our feet and how our uh, feet are constructed, the weight of the body actually um, weights on the arch of the feet. And he invented a very important uh, tool in shoemaking, which is uh, a support uh, for the arch uh, that you can insert in the shoes. Uh, and this will allow a very strong fit, a very strong support for the arch, and also the freedom to move the feet properly inside the shoes. So let's say this is really a milestone of the shoe construction. He was studying, uh, as we were discussing, uh, anatomy, and especially anatomy of the feet and of the walking uh, of the body. Uh, this is something that he patented and is still used uh, today in many of his constructions. If you move to the next uh, slide, this is something that uh, we can say synthesize our mission, high tech, high craft, high touch. This is sort of the um, guiding pillars of our current strategy. In the center, you can see high craft because this is something that the company really wants to keep uh, as part of our strategy even today. All our products are made in Italy. Uh, and this is something that uh, we want to uh, keep because we believe that having our uh, production very close and uh, working really closely with artisans and uh, uh, manufacturing locally is something that can help us to create uh, uh, the perfect product. High tech uh, is something that uh, uh, recalls all the innovations in terms of product that we keep bringing forward. I think it's interesting because now also this is translating especially in the use of new materials. We are constantly working to have uh, more sustainable materials in our production. We launched uh, this uh, sustainable thinking platform. Uh, this means that we are trying, of course, uh, to have the most uh, uh, sustainable materials possible. For sure, you cannot uh, have a 100% sustainable industry from day to night, but this is the direction in which all the innovative efforts of the company are moving. In the next slide, you can see another interesting, uh, I think, uh, founding pillar of our strategy when we talk about a star in the movies. Here you can see it's a picture of uh, the movie that was done uh, with Madonna uh, based on the story of Evita Peron, uh, which was one of the clients of Salvatore. And uh, this is a very important part of the company strategy, which uh, we keep bringing forward. Actually, we just worked with Luca Guadagnino. You will see this winter in the cinemas. There is a very nice uh, movie uh, called The Shoemaker of Dreams, uh, which will come out in the cinemas, which is based on the story of the life of Salvatore Ferragamo. And still today, we keep working with famous uh, directors and actresses also on very important special products, campaigns is something that we keep uh, bringing forward. Here is an interesting uh, timeline where you can see the introduction of the different uh, 
business units. The first one, of course, uh, to follow shoes was the handbag division, which was launched in 1950. Then we expanded into the ready to wear for women and the silk accessories. Then we started to develop uh, a collection of perfumes and fragrances in house and eyewear and watches. Echo Watches is the only product which is made in Switzerland. Actually, there is an exception of the, on the production line, which is actually the watches. Then jewelries, and then the men division uh, followed in the, um, as a second step. We expanded into the men's business, which is actually uh, doing very well worldwide. Today, uh, what can we say, as uh, we mentioned, um, we are a um, public uh, listed company. In 2011, we got listed in the Milan Stock Exchange and uh, um, we call ourselves a family public company because uh, uh, the family is still present, but at the same time, we are listed in the Stock Exchange. We are actually uh, now working to have uh, a different governance, a more, uh, let's say, uh, independent board of directors, where only a limited number of uh, family members uh, are uh, inside the board. And we are working uh, since many years with an external CEO. So. Uh, we have organized um, this way with a touch of a family presence, but with a professional management as well, uh, working together. We have a balanced uh, business where 60% is women's category and 40% uh, the men business. We have a strong retail network in, uh, in many countries. But uh, one third of this network is also operated through uh, third parties, uh, as we were mentioning before. For sure, now one of the pillars of the strategy is uh, digital and omnichannel, both in uh, uh, communication and also in the sales activity. Uh, we are present in more than 19 countries and uh, um, what we are uh, trying to, um, let's say, to have as a goal is really the fact of having a consistent teamage uh, uh, in all of these countries, really working very closely with our partners and franchisees. So this was a little bit of a first um, introduction to our company and our strategy and uh, business model. Thank you so much, Angelica. I think this answered a lot of the questions I have. But what I think we would all love to know is, what was it like growing up in the Ferragamo family? And as a Ferragamo yourself, are there any specific fond memories, traditions that you still carry forward? Of course, uh, I have to say, I consider myself very lucky. Uh, to um, have uh, uh, such a, an interesting family uh, to grow up because since I was a little girl, uh, my mother always brought, um, brought me with her around the world and I had really the opportunity of um, working, uh, let's say, very close uh, since a young age uh, with her and with the rest of the family and uh, get to know uh, the business and the markets. Uh, so I, I think this was really a very special opportunity that a young girl can have to have this, uh, um, this um, possibility to, to travel and to have this uh, business-minded uh, approach. So uh, this is, I think, the first important thing to say. And I also, uh, the Ferragamo was started by your grandfather, of course, but the entire global expansion was carried forward by your grandmother, Wanda, from all the research I had done. So what was that like when you were growing up with her? Was there anything specific that you learned that all of you have continued 
through time both personally and professionally absolutely i would start uh, with the personally because uh, she really um, was very close to every one of us we are more than 23 cousins and uh, she really had a very close and special relationship with uh, each and every one of us she uh, also invented a very nice uh, way of sharing her insights and advice with us. Uh, so basically, she uh, sent uh, each of us uh, this book called The Red Book, uh, which was a very nice book, but empty. And mm -hmm. every week or every month, uh, she sent to us a very nice letter where she wanted to uh, share uh, some, uh, some advice on different topics from personal to business. So maybe she sent us an article and she wanted to highlight something important, some important advice that she would see in this, uh, in this event. And this was something that we really uh, treasured uh, very much. And we still uh, read it once in a while because uh, it's all very good advice. First of all, on a personal side and then on a business and social side as well. Oh, wow, that's an incredible story and very inspiring. Yeah. And uh, so tell us, we know you're a really big family. There are so many third generation Ferragamos, yet the company has a rule that only three can be a part of the family business. So tell us a little bit more about how that works. Are there any specific uh, rules? Is there a selection process as to who will become a formal part of the company? Actually, we had worked many years ago on um, a plan in order, as we were saying, to keep this uh, business model, which is uh, uh, part with the presence of the family, but part also with professional management. So we uh, strongly we believe in this cooperation. And also we strongly believe that has to have a very clear and set rules also to be able to work uh, properly with, uh, with other people involved uh, in the company. They must know where the company, uh, what the company is standing for and which are the rules. So we thought that three was a proper number of family members to be involved. Uh, and we actually discussed uh, between us uh, um, a process of uh, identifying and uh, um, selecting people who could uh, apply for this um, for this opportunity, and um, and so uh, this is how let's say the the plan was done. We had the the help, the support of an external. Uh, but I do believe there are certain rules in place. Like for example, you had to work at a different company for two years before you could even apply to be a part of the Ferragamo business. Yes, we had all a set, let's say, of requirements that you need to um, have done before you, you can apply. So as you were mentioning, you have to have a previous uh, work experience in other companies uh, and uh, a certain degree of studies and uh, a certain, uh, let's say, um, process also you have to have some meetings with uh, an external committee that gets to know you and your uh, your experience uh, study and work experience so congratulations on being one of the three to be a part of the company and also over the years the family has diversified into a lot of other investments their hotels their vineyards uh, there are yachts so tell us a little bit more about the diversification a lot of us i personally I've been to Il Bodo. I think a lot of the people on this call have probably been to the Il Bodo either in Dubai or Italy. There's the vineyard. So tell us a little bit more. Was it a planned diversification outside the brand of Eridamo itself? I think actually it came quite uh, um, spontaneously and not really without a plan. So maybe what was a little bit more, uh, let's say, planned was the development into the hospitality business 
because there we decided uh, to invest in this uh, business, which we thought was very compatible with the fashion uh, business as well. And um, therefore, um, we have been opening uh, uh, some boutique hotels in Florence, in um, Rome, and we are opening a very nice uh, new hotel in Milan in next uh, month of April. So uh, this is really a separate business unit, which is run uh, in a total uh, independent way from the fashion company. With respect to all the other uh, activities that you mentioned, these are more born uh, from the interest of some other family members which had the passion of sailing or of winemaking or of agriculture. And so this, uh, let's say, took place in a, in a different and more uh, spontaneous way. They're all independent from the main uh, uh, fashion company business. Okay, that's interesting, allowing everyone to pursue their own passion. Yes, absolutely. And of course, this conversation is going to be incomplete without a mention of the pandemic as it is. So tell us, how did COVID-19 really change? Was there a change in the philosophy of the company? Is there a change now in your thinking for the way forward? So how has COVID-19 made a difference in Ferragamo, the ethos of the brand? We had a very tough year for sure, because we are uh, also a company working uh, um, with a high exposure to the travel retail business. We are uh, a company which has always been pioneering with the business in airports, in foreign countries. So for sure, we have been uh, heavily affected by the pandemic because we had a lot of stores uh, closed. Uh, worldwide and many of them are still closed especially in the major uh, airports um, we had an opportunity to rethink our digital strategy because uh, we had a big increase in our e-commerce uh, share of the business so this was something that really uh, had a major um, impact also in making us recover uh, all the problems of having the stores closed. We um, had the opportunity as well to rethink from the stores the way we interacted with our clients because for sure clients were more uh, local than ever. And so every store manager, even if the store was closed, uh, started to have a more close relationship uh, with his uh, customers and working in a different way. So we can say this is something that also was an opportunity to improve the connection and the level of service with the clients because it was not anymore a walk-in, but it was more of a dialogue with your client. Yes, of course. In fact, I think that's the true mark of a real brand that you looked at it as an opportunity to develop a relationship with them as opposed to look and the fact that stores are shut or people aren't traveling or they don't have anywhere to wear all these amazing accessories and clothing. So that's been an interesting way to look at it, definitely. Absolutely. We tried really to see how we could uh, keep going in the best way, you know, to serve our clients and to, to keep uh, the business up and running. And I suppose that will remain a part of the company philosophy. Yes, for sure. I think so. It was a big challenge. We are still in the middle, of course, because in many countries we are still struggling with the lockdowns and complicated situations. But uh, I think it was uh, important to react, of course. True. So uh, tell us, Angelica, what, according to you, would be the ethos of Ferragamo, the brand, if there was one thing that you would... Uh, talk about the brand that it really stands for, what would it be? I think it would stand for quality and creativity. I think really these are the two uh, pillars uh, that we try to um, put as our main goals because we believe in the, um, in the quality of products. So uh, any, at the same time in creativity, innovation, 
So, you know, our mission is at the end to always offer some new styles to our clients and the best possible fit, as we were saying before. This is something that we keep uh, as a main goal, our shoe business, which is really the foundation of our company. We try to attract uh, the best shoe designers. We try to use the best and most innovative materials and techniques. The business, the shoe business has changed a lot. Another big trend that we've seen also following the pandemic, and especially in some market, for example, the US, we have seen some months where the business suddenly became um, very casual. So even a shift in the styles that people uh, used every day. And uh, so really, you know, important to react in what the clients need and uh, keep up with market requests. Now, for example, the trend immediately has changed again and we are having a request again for high heels, uh, evening styles, because ladies uh, have this desire to go back to a more feminine uh, um, way of dressing. So, you know, it's really important uh, to keep, uh, keep uh, innovation and creativity at the highest uh, of our priorities. True, I think after spending a year at home, at leisure, casual clothing is all done with. I think we all want to get ready, even if it's to meet our neighbor. And all the women definitely love Ferragamo because the wedge was invented by him. And especially in India, where normally we attend a whole lot of weddings and other things, the wedge is something that's a staple in every woman's wardrobe. So we definitely do love your brand. Absolutely. I think one of the best wedges uh, that were ever made, uh, it's a completely um, enjoyed wedge, uh, which was done uh, for a very nice Indian uh, princess, uh, the Marani of Kosh Behar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an unbelievable shoe that we still keep in our museum and we treasure it because it's probably one of the most precious I believe she got 100 shoes designed by Salvatore himself. We are talking about Maharani Indra Devi, who is Maharani Gayatri Devi's mother. And I think some of them contain real diamonds and real jewels. Maybe the one that you have in the museum could be one of those. Exactly. It's completely made in gold with the real jewels, like rubies and emeralds. Really, it's unbelievable. I think for sure it's one of the most uh, stunning styles that we have. We would love to see that too. And so tell us, uh, Angelica, Ferragamo is what's known in Italy as a white fly because the family still owns the majority of the company. And it's actually more famous for sustainability, not really family scandals. It's also one of the last luxury brands to not have been swallowed up by a foreign goods conglomerate. So how has that worked for the brand so far? Is there a um, policy to stay away from that or it's just something that's happened through time that you still remain primarily a family business? Actually, after this very tough uh, pandemic year, we decide uh, to keep the business uh, always in the family. But we decided, as we were saying, to have a change in the corporate governance. And we just announced that we are hiring one of the top CEOs worldwide, which is Marco Gubetti. He's joining Ferragamo, coming from Barbary. He has a great experience in the public uh, listed companies. He has a great experience in the fashion uh, companies as well. So the family will remain, but of course uh, we really wanted to strengthen uh, uh, the management team and really bring uh, um, a very strong uh, uh, professional management team to help us in the next years, because as you were saying, competition is really strong. Uh, and uh, we want to stay as we are, like uh, a family company, but uh, with a strong uh, um, management that can help us in this competitive uh, environment. So this is uh, our uh, position. 
so that's very interesting you managed to somehow sustain that balance even over the last since 1927 to now so you've surpassed a century and yet sustained that balance of being professionally and yet family run coming to which there, there have to be some highlights of working in the family enterprise there also have to be some challenges so we would love for you to tell us a little bit of both the highlights and the challenges of working in the business as such i think uh, it's important to uh, what we have always you know been uh, um told uh, as you were mentioning before by our uh, grandmother and by our uh, family even if you work in a family business you have to uh, work like uh, uh, like if you were working in a public company so it's very important to be highly respectful of all the you know rules and uh, professional uh, business practice so this is something that i think if you're a family member you have to even be more careful to apply and to respect so a lot of us on this call are the part of family businesses in india that's something that's very common exactly so you know better than me how important it is you know to to work uh, side by side with all the team and really being a um, a proper team and uh, respect uh, each other family and non family thank you that's a great reply and tell me are there any other family enterprises globally that you really admire they could have originated in italy or elsewhere i think there are many family business that i admire in every uh, area of business I think it's a very important uh, business model. It's important to manage it properly with uh, uh, professional rules, but I think that family can be a great uh, added value and a great uh, strength for a company. As we were saying as long as it's managed uh, properly. And uh, Ferragamo takes the whole made in Italy tag literally very seriously. I think Florence was, of course, a big motivating factor. Still is in the company. So tell us a little bit more about how I think the production is entirely besides the watches still in Italy. Is that yeah. right? Production is made mainly in Florence and uh, in the area of Naples. where we have important um, uh, production facilities which are not owned by us we work very closely with partnerships with our um, suppliers they have been working for us for a, almost a century and uh, they are independent company but we have uh, you know a exclusive relationship with them and this has proven a very good uh, a uh, way also of uh, managing the production side with these close partnerships so not owned by us but uh, developing a really exclusive uh, um suppliers true and also a great way of creating livelihood for so many back in your hometown yes we thought this was really a plus uh, because it can really allow the team to work very closely with the production True. so we have people from the company visiting uh, every week and working together in the development and realization of the product we just opened uh, in our headquarters in florence uh, also a new uh, plant which is the only one that we own uh, where we have our best artisans and they produce uh, a very interesting line uh, which is called uh, Ferragamo Creations and uh, is the line which reproduces exactly all handmade uh, the most iconic styles uh, from uh, um, the shoes made by Salvatore Ferragamo the most important ones uh, we also have the famous wedge that was reproduced uh, um and it's a limited uh, number a uh, series and you can actually find uh, every year we produce like uh, 10 uh, of these styles so it's something very special and very precious and, and in 
that the wedge that you were talking about, I think, was produced during World War II. Yes, exactly. And so you can really find in this uh, special collection all the styles that were made uh, from the 20s uh, up to the 60s. So it's a really something very special is our, let's say, uh, uh, best um, part of the collection. We can say top uh, tier of the collection. And is this Perigamo Creations production facility open to outsiders to visit? Yes, actually, oh, wow. this is a very nice uh, visit. And if some of you are interested, for sure, we can organize when you come to Florence. We um, can also organize a visit uh, very close to this facility. We have the archives, uh, which are also open to selected uh, visits. Uh, and it's something totally uh, fascinating where you have all, um, all styles uh, from the last uh, 60 years. Uh, that's incredible. Currently, for all of us, I think the only visit or travel to Italy is this conversation at the moment. Absolutely. So we are loving that. So tell me, uh, Judika, what is your favorite Ferragamo product? Is there something that you think is iconic for the brand itself? And is there something which is your personal favorite? So for sure, uh, let's say apart from uh, uh, the shoes we were discussing, I think uh, uh, the Fular is another iconic uh, product, which I think it's uh, um, great and personally my favorite. I love all the designs, uh, the colors, and it's an amazing technique as well. Um, this is something also that I'm personally connected because it was uh, started by my mother, Fulvia. Mm -hmm. and uh, she was living in Milan and she was working very close with artisans from Como, which is a small town, uh, which you probably know close to Milan, uh, where you have all the excellence in uh, silk uh, production. And it's an incredible production, all handmade as well for a large part, uh, because you have, you start from these designs and then there is a very sophisticated uh, technique uh, uh, that creates all these wonderful scarves uh, and uh, personally is my uh, favorite product we are actually hosting a very nice exhibition in our museum in Florence right now dedicated to this uh, uh, iconic uh, symbol of Ferragamo we have um, uh, I think over a hundred of scarves displayed and uh, ties. And you can find different sections. Uh, we have all the floral prints in one room. Then we have all the themes uh, from the exotic traveling in another room and one on the flower animals, which is another icon of the, the brand. Coming to which a lot a lot of your scarves are colorful and bright, a lot of what actually India represents. And I do know you have visited this country multiple times. So has there ever been a specific inspiration into any product line that uh, the country visits have tied into? Absolutely. Actually, there was uh, um, a nice collection, as we were saying, of the silks, uh, which was made uh, all uh, uh, on the theme of exotic traveling. And India has always been a constant uh, source of inspiration for these prints. Uh, we have um, some lovely prints uh, with Indian elephants, tigers, all uh, Indian uh, animals. And one of our best sellers is the Tree of Life scarf which I think also recalls uh, a very nice Indian inspiration. Wow, that's interesting to hear. And tell us now that uh, sustainability is something that I think Ferragamo has always looked at from the beginning. As we spoke about the wedge, I believe that time in World War II, the only material available was cork, which is now used in all wedges, but that is something that you guys started the wedge with. So tell us a little bit more about how sustainability constantly ties into the brand. You did talk about it in your presentation. But in the last few years, sustainability has definitely become uh, the main ethos of any brand. So how does Ferragamo now look at it? 
Actually, we have uh, been working um, with the Fashion Pact, where all the major fashion company have uh, signed up. And it's an important agreement uh, where you have to you know, meet every year a certain goal in terms of sustainability. So uh, really in terms of the use of material, production techniques, uh, and also um, materials, as we were saying. For example, talking again about accessories, we have launched a sustainable uh, cashmere line, uh, which was uh, an immediate success. Uh, also because even our business partners and our clients are highly committed to the sustainable products and the sustainability goals. So well, the customer, I think that's something now everyone looks at when you're purchasing a product. Absolutely. And this is also, I think, very important because there is really, you know, a commitment on the company side, but even on the client side. So this makes it really moving uh, forward. And, uh, and it's something that, uh, you know, as we were saying, as much as we can, we keep introducing uh, better materials. So, you know, chrome free and always improving the level of, um, of the, and the quality of sustainable products, materials and ways of working. Yes, because when a brand like Ferragamo adopts sustainability, I think it only ties down into uh, other brands. So that definitely is something that's very important. So tell us, Ferragamo is present in over 90 countries. And there's a saying that the endeavor of the brand is to get a foothold as early as possible in a country. In India, I think that was definitely the case. You were one of the first luxury brands to open in Delhi for sure. So tell us what is next for the brand to come? Actually, uh, we keep uh, this strategy. We are now entering uh, new markets, uh, for example, in Latin America. We just opened uh, a store in um, Ecuador. We are going to open a store in uh, Guatemala, in Costa Rica. So uh, we always have this strategy in mind. And... Um, we believe in this uh, pioneer approach uh, with respect to markets. Which is incredible because uh, when you enter a country, it inspires creativity at all levels. And especially because I think you tie into accessories, clothing, men, women, children. There's every aspect that comes in. Absolutely. And I think it really, you know, helps to get uh, a good uh, knowledge of the local client, because uh, if you're also one of the first brands to enter in the country and uh, clients, uh, they choose your brand and you can really start to, you know, uh, get to understand what they prefer, how they like to uh, the product, uh, what is the, the demand in this market. So it really allows you to, to get a first mover inside into the, the business. And you also end up, uh, say, using design concepts from different countries. I'm assuming the entire design team is based in Italy. But when you enter so many different countries, of course, there's a specific vibe of every country that comes in. Every store is curated differently. To each market actually we have a very we try to have a very consistent image throughout all the markets so we make sure that every partner and every store can share all of our you know guidelines materials in terms of uh, uh, store layout of course but also in terms of visual merchandising product assortments marketing uh, initiatives where we team up uh, locally is more on the um, marketing side. For example, uh, uh, talking again about South America, we just had a very nice project there where we launched a uh, capsule resort collection and we teamed up with local um, artists from Brazil, young uh, designers. 
and it was a major uh, success, a very nice and colorful uh, project, which wow. allowed us to discover a lot of young uh, artists and really you know, push the collection in a very nice and uh, local way. And so much learning both ways for the young artists to work with uh, the, a brand like Kerigamo, with the techniques, with the sustainability, with your production, and for you to be able to inspire these young creative minds. Exactly. Absolutely. And also, I think uh, they, uh, you know, also looking, uh, working with local uh, celebrities. It's something that has proven very impactful because um, you know also they can give us access to the local uh, clients uh, in a very nice way for example also um, during the lockdown and during these uh, hard months this is something that we developed uh, in every market working really also to get in contact with the local clients uh, but always with somebody from the market that could introduce the brand and uh, make us closer to the, the local market. I think you've always been in touch with the best celebrities from the Maharani in Radevi to Marilyn Monroe. There's not a celebrity that hasn't known Ferragamo and still continues to. Absolutely, absolutely. This is something that we, we keep uh, bringing forward and it really is something that recalls our heritage in the cinema industry because really there it's where the, the, um, it all started. And so it's something that naturally keeps going on. True. Thank you so, so much, Angelica. Is there something you would like to share with us before we formally thank you and end this beautiful conversation? I would like to thank you. It was very nice to, to meet you and to discuss together. I think uh, India has always been part uh, of our history and uh, has a very special uh, place in our company and in our hearts. So we are very happy of this uh, partnership with you. Likewise, because uh... Indians are family businesses. We have lots of cousins, extended family. Italians are very similar. So even when I was researching on the business, it just felt there were so many facets one could relate to, which was incredible. Absolutely. I think we have a lot of uh, shared values and uh, lifestyle that really makes us very uh, close. It's been wonderful having you here, Angelica. I hope we can host you in India soon. And even better, I hope we can visit you in Italy sooner. I would now like to please request Senior Vice Chair Gayatri Rai to give the official vote of thanks. Angie, thank you so much for sharing your, uh, the fascinating journey of Peregamo with us today. As a token of appreciation, we would like to present you a green certificate of trees that we've planted in your name. This is our endeavor in the contribution to be green. I would also like to thank past YFLO chairperson Itiva Chopra and Reliance Brands Limited for ideating this event with us. Thank you to all our members for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you all soon at our next event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angelica. I hope you have a wonderful day. We know it's morning for you. You too. Thank you so much. It was really nice to, to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, team, we can end the Zoom now.